Here, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a vellum simulation using the .NET context. In a previous video titled Vellum for Beginners, I demonstrated how to set up a vellum simulation using the SOP context. The difference between the .NET setup and the SOP level context is that we have access to other types of solvers in the .NET. We can mix other types of solvers like the RBD solver, flip solver, and mix them together with the vellum solver. For example, in this video, I'm going to set up a vellum simulation that will interact with some fractured RBD objects. This will be a very simple interaction. So let's drop down the torus. Again, I'm going to raise this up and I'm just going to, it's going to be a simple vellum simulation by just dropping it down onto the ground. Raise it up by two meters. Again, I'm going to be turning this torus into a cloth. So I'm just going to use SideFX's pre-configured vellum cloth. So this is the pre-configured one. Setting up the vellum.net is a little different from the vellum solver on the SOP level setup that was demonstrated in a previous video. Okay, let's start by dropping on a .NET first. Let's go into the .NET. Obviously, we need a vellum object. And we need a vellum source. Then we need a vellum solver just like any other simulation it needs its own solver let's hook this up this goes here and post pros pros solve goes to the source let's throw down some gravity and hook this up to the output now for the source it's asking for sop path it's asking for constraint soft path sop path let's go back up this is actually these three outputs here. So we know that we can actually separate the geometry by putting a null here and go like vellum geometry. And I need to separate this constraints. So we have it separated like this. It's nice to put it out here though, because it's easier to find when it's all listed down and you have all your outs in the same right beside each other in that list. I don't need a collision geometry here because you can al always put a static object inside the .NET. So I don't really need this anymore. So let's go back into the .NET. Let's, I'm going to reset the uh, timeline though. Go into the .NET. And now we can fill this in for the vellum source. The salt path, well, that's going to be this one. That's this geo it's going to be our vellum geometry. So this is what I mean when you put an out prefix on the nulls, all your outs will be um, together in the list. So it's easier to choose from. So I'm going to put vellum geometry here. This is what I need. The constraint soft path. So right after we choose this, we, you notice that it loads immediately into the 3D display port. So we're on the right track. Constraint soft path. So this is the constraint uh, of the vellum constraints. So that's this one, out constraint. Let's just play it and see what happens. It's falling. That's awesome. The infinite abyss, it's just falling forever. So let's put down a ground plane. Now, we're in the .NET. We can put down the ground plane how we always do it before. So that's just the ground plane here. Let's merge it in. And again, the ground plane merge it in with the rest of this. I don't like, uh, it needs to be merged left to right. So let's move this up here, the merge, and you can specify the order. The ground plane has to be merged left to right. It's important for the dot net. So let's just play it and see what happens. Good. We have something happening. That's what I wanted to show you. We have something happening. This is a cloth, obviously. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. I should have created a balloon here instead of the cloth. For the purpose of this video, this should be fine. For every .NET, we have a .import. We have to import the information from the simulation inside the .NET and bring it into this context. That's how we use the .NET. So let's throw down a .import. Now, which one do we use? 
I'm going to need a dot import fields. Dot import field. Now, this is a little different. Why? Because in the end of the day, we want a vellum IO. Why? Because we want to cache our simulation. And because the vellum IO is part of the vellum world, there's three inputs. One for the vellum uh, geometry, constraint, and the collision uh, geometry, which we don't really need to care about at this at this particular moment. So we need the villain geometry. So let's import. Let's get it. Let's get it from that dot net, from the dot import field. How? Well, first of all, let's fill this in. Dot network. That's this one. So let's click and drag this guy and drop it in. Now default object. Okay. Let's open the um, spreadsheet geometry first. Select the dot net, and okay, my uh, Houdini file had just crashed, so I'm gonna start where I left off. Now it's asking for a default object. Now let's let's select the dot net first, and I'm gonna open up the geometry spreadsheet. In here, we have a dot net. That's this is our dot net. We have the vellum object. This is our default object. This is the object from the dot network simulation that we want to import into this context. So for this dot import field, that's what we want in this field, in this default object field. I want the vellum object. Now you can just go into the dot net and that's this object right here. Select it, click this, select this name, just control C to copy the name, come back up, select the dot import field and that's paste that name into the default object so press enter now nothing's happening it's not being imported uncheck the import simulation thing because i'm i don't need that right now not for this example now you need to at least have one field to be importing in order for this to the function it can be blank, like this field can be blank. So immediately when I add this one field in, it loads right into the 3D viewport. So you know that uh, you're doing something right. For the visualization, I'm gonna choose no change. You can leave this blank. You just need it there. For the top import field, I'm gonna name this vellum because this is the geometry data. Now the reason why we need this like that um, now the end of the goal, the end of the day, so we have a dot net. We have the villain working inside a dot net. What's the next step we need? File caching. So I need the villain IO. So let's drop that down. Now the villain IO, because it's part of the villain world, it has those three inputs. However, I only have one villain geometry to input it in. But let's plug in what we know. And we know that this vellum geometry goes to the first input because this takes vellum geometry. At least we're in the right step. And for the vellum IO, I'm gonna remove the hip name because only because I have multiple files. I don't need that. You can keep that in. I'm gonna check this load so it automatically loads. Now we don't have the constraint information hooked up. So how do we get the constraint information from the dot net? Well, first of all, like all other way we extract data from dot net, we need a dot import. That's how we extract data. So let's look into the dot. Uh, let's dot. So this this is all the dot imports. We have a few. So let's use the same dot import field as we did before. Let's put that down. Let's fill in what we know. Let's put the render flag onto this. Uh, dot import field it's asking for a dot network well obviously we know what that is so let's click and drag this dot network drop it in here default object well it's going to be the vellum object so control v and it uncheck the import simulation setting so i don't need this and i know i i need at least one field to import so let's add one so this is right now, it's just doing the same thing. It's just loading the vellum geometry. That's not what we want. I'm just going to change this to no change for now. Let's look here. Let's go back to the dot net. 
And let's look carefully into the vellum object here. Let's expand this. It has a constraint geometry object. Now that's what I need to import. So let's go back to the uh, dot import field and over here into this field. Let's type that in constraint geometry. And right when we, I press enter, the 3D viewport updates and that is this white wire frame. So we know that we're on the right track. It's importing the constraint information. So I'm going to hook this up into the constraints because that's what it is. That's this middle input in the vellum IO. So let's put the render flag into the vellum IO and let's save this. Uh, I'm going to change this name first and I'm going to save this. Okay, let's try and play it once and see what it looks like. So I'm going to lower this geometry spreadsheet. I'm going to hide that for now so I have more real estate. Let's play it. Okay, so it's loading from disk. It's file cache. That's awesome. However, you probably don't want to render this. This is very low poly. So what do we do when we... Um, how do we fix this inside the vellum? It's the same thing. It's it's still using the vellum post process. So we can just put this one down. Hook this up. Put the render flag here. For this example, I do not need to extrude by thickness simply because this is a closed geometry and it's uh, it's not a flat plane or anything. So I don't need thickness. I do need the subdivision. So I'm going to choose Camel Clark for this and choose three subdivisions. You can choose any mount you want. And I'm going to replay the simu uh, replay this. So this looks a lot more smoother. So that's how you set up a vellum simulation using a dot net. I'm going to come up here because I'm going to share the file. So I want this properly labeled. So I'm going to start off with fractured object. I'm going to start off with a test object. Let's do the rubber toy. So the rubber toy comes default with this shop material pack, which provides all this color and textures and UVs for it. Uh, I'm sorry, not UVs, uh, the textures and the material for it. So I don't want that. I just want the, the rubber toy. I'm just going to delete that. So I just have the plain rubber toy geometry. Put down transform. I'm going to raise this up a bit. It, it above, it, I want it above the torus. Now I'm going to make this a teeny bit bigger so I can sprinkle it all over. Okay, I'm going to fracture this, scatter some points on it. Pieces in inside in the interior as well. So I'm going to put an ISO offset down. Turns this rubber toy into a volume. So I can have the interior density in order to scatter points inside the interior. So if I just put down a scatter without the ISO offset, you can, so this is what we get. So this is like an outline of the entire rubber toy, like the exterior surface has points scattered all over it on top. After you put an ISO offset and then a scatter node, the, these points are inside. So that's the difference there. Then I'm going to put down an old Voronoi fracture. This will fracture the rubber toy according to the scatter point. Now, in order to view the scattered fractured rubber toy, I'm going to explode the view. So what this does is just takes these points and just moves them out a bit. So you can see how the points, a uh, fractured pieces look like. So you can adjust, this is like the original and then this exploded, sort of moves it all out so you can see it. So that's good. So this was only for visualization purposes. I'm not going to be using this. So I have my fractured pieces. I'm going to go back to the vellum dot net. Now the whole purpose of creating this fractured uh, rubber toy is to drop these pieces on top of the torus cloth so you can see it interact with it. Let's go back. Let's go inside here. Okay. Now I'm going to test this by just and do one thing at a time. Let's bring in the RBD object because that's what we need. It's going to be an RBD fractured object, and we need a corresponding RBD solver. The, for the RBD fractured object, we need to specify a sop path. So let's go back up. Here, I'd like to bring in the, the objects, the corresponding objects, into this context first. So this would be fractured object.
go in here, it's in the vellum.net uh, fractured object. So in here now, we can specify sort path. So we see it in the 3D view right away. So let's just, let's just play. So we can see it falling down. Let's stop it. The fractured pieces of the rubber toy will fall and land on the top surface of the torus cloth. So we're going to convert this vellum torus into a static object and then feed that data into the RBD fractured object simulation. So this would be like a mini a first phase in the simulation where this is the vellum simulation and this would be the RBD simulation. So we feed in the vellum simulation into the RBD simulation as a static object. So this isn't a true interaction between the two because the RBD simulation will not be affecting the vellum. Only the vellum sim will be acting as a static object will be affecting the RBD sim. It's not doing it both ways. So you'll see what I mean when I'm going to drop down a SOP network. Now I'm going to transform the vellum simulation into a static object using the SOP network that I just dropped down. Let's go into here. Now I first need to import that vellum object in here first. And I'm going to import fields. Now the network, the .NET network. Now that's just going to be this one. This is the only .NET network I have. I'm trying to convert the vellum simulated torus into a static object. And the vellum sim is cooked inside this .NET. It'll make a lot more sense after I finish this. Now what do I want to import? So I want to import this vellum uh, simulation. So I want to, this is the object that I'm concerned about. So let's copy this name, this default object. That's going to be this import simulations. I'm, I, sh I don't think I need this actually. And let's click this. So as you can see right now, it's not loading into the 3d viewport. I should be seeing, um, the vellum torus here. Now if that ever happens to you, just come here and just go to adopt import. Just drop down another dot import and just. Let me see if this will fix it. Yeah, just flip this uh, render flag from another one and onto an, this one. I don't think you have to. You actually have to drop down another dot import. You can. I, I think it works if you just drop down a null. For some strange reason, it, it does that. You just need to flip this render flag. It'll cause it. It'll, it will trigger the update into the three D viewport. So I didn't change uh, anything other than that from from filling out this. So now that we have extracted the Vellum Taurus simulation data into this SOP network context, into this context, I'm just going to, so I'm going to show you, let's go back up. Now the whole purpose of this SOP network is to convert the Vellum to static object and then feed the static object into uh, the RBD. So we need a static object. And I'll need to merge it to the RBD, just like how you have, like, um, you would, we used, we had a ground plane here. You would merge the ground plane into the, the corresponding simulation. Same thing here. We have a static object and we're going to merge it into the RBD. Next, now I'm going to hook this whole thing and hook it up to this main simulation. So the whole simulation would be um, connected together. So I'm going to drop down the merge. I'm going to merge it with this. So you can see that this is, this is phase one. This vellum is phase one. And then we convert the vellum into a static object using this node. The static here will extract the vellum uh, simulation geometry data and feed it into the RD, RBD simulation. So let's fill out the static object. The SOP path. Now the SOP path is the vellum static object that we converted. So inside the vellum.net, so that's what we're at right now. And inside the .net, so that's what this context is, we have a vellum to static object. So that's the SOP network we created here. So let's go inside. Now this out vellum geo. Now that's what we just got. This converts it. Uh, this is what 
is uh, extracted from this vellum simulation up here and we've extracted the, di the geometry data so let's grab that now you need to check this because this use deformed geometry because the vellum tor the the torus is different every single frame especially when it starts to deform when it hits the ground it actually deforms in shape so you need to check this this is it's a deforming object but let's try let's try what this see what this does first so let's just um app, i'm just gonna play it see what happens so i cooked a few frames in order to see what it looks like so this is what it looks like The vellum object is being converted into a static object and then colliding with the RBD, fractured RBD toy, rubber toy. So you can see it's not a true interaction as in like this vellum torus is not being pushed inward by the RBD pieces. So if it was going to be like a true interaction, the vellum torus should be able to react from the RBD object press against a cloth the cloth should it should show a bit of pressure but as you can see here it's not being affected the vellum torus is not being affected by the rbd object the torus cloth is pushing back at the rbd pieces and the rbd pieces either bounce or slide off the torus cloth without even weighing the cloth down because like as you can see here we have our vellum simulation here it's being simmed out and then that's like the first phase, first step. And then it's being converted here into the vellum into a static object, which we then feed into the RBD simulation. And then this is where we have the output. The interaction ends there. It's a one-way interaction. The vellum simulation cooks by itself without being affected by the RBD objects. However, the vellum sim does act as a collider for the RBD simulation. As you can see, the fractured RBD pieces lands on the surface of the torus. The torus, however, does not get affected by the RBD pieces. In reality, if we think about this, we would imagine that the RBD objects would weigh down the torus because the torus is light weighted since it's a cloth made from our vellum simulation. Compared to the RBD objects, the torus is very lightweight, and the RBD objects are much heavier. But in our output, we don't see that the torus is being affected by the RBD objects at all. Let's consider what would happen if we add another, an additional phase after the RBD sim. Now what does that mean? We can do the same thing we did with the vellum sim, and how we converted the sim into a static object. But this time, we'll convert the RBD sim into a static object and then feed it back into a vellum simulation. So what am I trying to achieve by doing all this? I want the simulation to look more realistic. When the torus cloth falls down with the RBD objects, it weighs it down from above, or it should weigh it down. The initial simulation has the RBD objects colliding with the torus cloth and the cloth looks like it's more, it, it's like it's getting in the way of the RBD objects, which shouldn't happen in real life because the cloth has insignificant weight compared to the RBD objects. The RBD objects should, should weigh it down instead. The only way I could achieve this was by doing it phase by phase like this. However, this is not a true interaction. At first, I tried using the multi-solver and plug in the vellum solver and the RBD solver together so the physics engine could compute both types of objects together and I'd hoped I would get a more realistic simulation that way. But all I kept getting was an error. So I came up with this way of splitting the simulation manually and by doing it phase by phase. At least I can achieve a fake but pretty decent result. So let's add this extra phase. Using a DOP import field, I'm able to extract the RBD geometry from the simulation and only the RBD geometry.
Now let's click this. Let's click this thumbnail. Now these are the pieces. These pieces is what I want to import or what I want to extract from the simulation. So in here, I'm going to go pieces. This is asterisk because it's the, every piece has a different name. And I don't need that. I don't need this. Just there, there you go. There's all my pieces extracted out. I'm going to feed the RBD pieces that is extracted from our .NET simulation and feed this into a vellum solver as a collision geometry. The RBD geo that we extracted from the simulation has RBD pieces falling down on the torus, and then we cooked that out. Now, this provides a general animated path for all the RBD geometry. It sort of guesses where the RBD pieces would land and how they fall if there was a torus underneath it. Now we took that dot net and we only extracted the RBD pieces. So after we got that estimated RBD animation, we then used this as a static geometry to collide with our with another independent vellum simulation. So this is like the third phase. This independent vellum simulation does not have any connections to the original vellum simulation in the .NET. This part is important. I'm going to set up a separate independent vellum simulation and add it to this SOP level, but use the predefined RBD objects. So that's the uh, RBD pieces that we extracted from the .NET and have them already been, so they're all already uh, they're already falling and use that as a colliding object for this independent vellum simulation. I'm going to finish up plugging in the rest of the inputs for this vellum solver. For the vellum geometry and vellum constraints, I'm going to use the initial torus that was defined before the .NET. This is because I don't want the vellum simulation to be totally different from our original torus, but I do want it to be different. I want to improve the torus simulation so it interacts more with the RBD objects. Basically, I want the RBD objects to look like it's weighing down the torus cloth. But in the .NET simulation, it wasn't doing that. The torus cloth was pushing back at the RBD object because we turned it into a static object. Let's see, let's see what this looks like. Well, for one thing, this vellum solver doesn't have a ground plane. So it's falling right through. Let's add a ground plane and try it again. Now I can't really see it, so I'm just going to throw down the vellum post process. Let's play it a bit. You can see that it's being, the vellum object is being squished down by the RBD geometry. If I merge what we see here and the RBD geometry, we should be able to see everything. Now, okay, right after I merge this, I'm going to turn this back to light so you can see this. You can see that black blob right there. See that black blob? That's the torus. That's our vellum. That's our vellum object right here. Now it's being turned black because the normals are messed up after we merge it. If you just put down a normal, now the normals determine where the exterior of the surface is, which side is the exterior surface. So the normal is very important in terms of when you put color or when visualizing or rendering and putting material on top. Otherwise, it won't know which side is the outside and which side is the inside. So having normals is very important for rendering. So after you put down a normal, that'll fix that. So you can see that it's being squashed down like the RBD objects are starting to fall through the vellum torus and both objects are overlapping, which doesn't make sense. This is happening because the vellum torus is too thin and the RBD solver is having trouble figuring out or calculating the collisions between the objects. There are several ways we can improve the simulation to help the RBD solver calculate the collisions. I'm going to find a frame where it goes, where the RBD piece is actually going through the vellum object. Now it's starting to go through here. See, it's starting to bleed through. It's overlapping the vellum object, which like it, it shouldn't. If this was a, a more, a better simulation, it shouldn't bleed through. Now we can still improve this. Let's go back into the .NET. 
we can still improve this. Now, if you remember this static object, it actually has a proxy volume. So if we feed in a VDB in here, it has a more, more data to work with in order to calculate the collision. So let's try that. Let's see how much that we can improve that with. Okay, so in here, where we turn the vellum uh, simulation into a static object, let's go in there because that's what we need. Now let's turn this geometry, let's turn this geometry into a VDB. So we have a proxy volume. Here we go, film VDB. Here, here we use vol volume collisions. That's what we want to use. And let's view the collision data. Let's disable, uh, toggle this off so we can actually see it. Mode, I want a volume sample. And here I want it by size. So if this becomes 0.1, yes, okay. Let's go into the SOPnet. So in order to get rid of this um, infinite recursion error, you need, for the DOB import, toggle this, do not trigger simulation. Because we're only doing this one phase at a time. That's the only way this is going to work. This is not thick enough. Let's, I'm going to, I need a, something more fine grained. The improved version of the simulation just finished cooking. So I'm just going to make this a little bigger. I'm just going to run through the frames. Okay, let's check this out. So it's still overlapping with the vellum simulation. You can see that here, it's, it's still going through it. I think it starts the overlap here. Yeah, some like this piece just flew right through. Just flew right through this piece right here. I can improve the simulation a little bit more. Now my main concern is that some of these RBD pieces are going through the vellum object. So this RBD simulation is having a lot of trouble detecting the collision between um, the vellum torus. So let's make, it's probably because the vellum torus is getting a little thin. Like there's some, this middle part where it gets squashed, it's getting super thin. So it's having a lot of trouble detecting that. So let's make another one. With this one, I want to import the constraints, thin constraints. So I don't need the geometry. If we come up here, uh, let's open up geometry spreadsheet. Over here, the vellum object, now that's what we're importing. There's a constraint geometry and there's a geometry. So this was already imported. This is what the next thing I need, constraint geometry. So let's go back in. So that's what I have here, constraint geometry. Now you can see all the constraints here. I'm going to make the background darker. You can see all the constraints in this wireframe mode. Now this is the VDB. I want to make this VDB a little, I want to make this geometry thicker first. I want to make this geometry thicker before I feed it into the VDB. So let's pull this, sorry, let's pull this down so we have more room. And I'm going to throw down a vellum post process. Now, if you remember correctly, in my previous video, I talked about the post process. And the post process has this extrude by thickness. So I can actually make it thicker. Oh, I think I need more uh, subdivisions. Clark, twice. Let me try two. So it is getting a little thicker. I'm going to give it five. And then I'm going to feed this into the VDB polygons. So before I turn it into a VDB, I made it a lot thicker. Then I'm going to try and redo the simulation. So I finished cooking a few frames. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, I'm going to go up to get a better view. I can tell that this is a lot better. Now we're on frame 27 before we start seeing something go through here. 
Or that's not going through, it's just falling on the side, which... There is some overlapping, like these small pieces, there's too small to detect the simulation. Which we can still improve the simulation just a bit more by turning up the sub-steps. So if I go in down here, if I highlight the RBD solver. Or I can actually switch this out for a different solver. I can try using a rigid body solver instead. Turn this to an RBD. Pull the RBD. The reason I want to use this is because I can adjust the sub steps. Now I have changed it to an RBD. So let's do 3 to 8. Now this is going to increase the amount of cooking time as well. So this will take a long time to cook. Let me try this. Okay, just finished cooking a few frames. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is frame 27. We don't see any overlapping at all. Maybe over here. Yeah, there's a bit of overlapping here. So if I wanted to improve the simulation even further and get rid of this overlap, I could increase the sub steps even more, but I'm not going to do that uh, because it took long enough to cook the first time. And if I... And I can't imagine how long it would take if I increased the sub steps even more. For a short recap, there are three ways I used to improve the quality of the simulation and prevent unwanted overlapping between different geometries. The first one was providing a proxy volume. The second was making the original geometry shape larger by extruding before converting it to a proxy volume. The third was increasing the substeps in the solver. In some scenarios, this might be okay. This kind of setup what might be okay for your purposes. And but I need you to, again to understand that this is not a true interaction between these two. It's it's more like a bit of a it's more like cheating <laughs> because we're doing it one phase at a time. This vellum, the vellum that we see in this simulation inside the dot net right now, like this torus that's landing on here, is not the same, it's not even the same vellum that's happening here. Yeah, as you can see, this vellum solver is not using any data. It's not using any data from this dot net. It's using the original vellum cloth geometry and constraint data and calculating it all over again. Then you might be thinking why did i need this dot net in the first place this dot net only existed so that i can approximate the rbd simulation otherwise th these uh fractured pieces wouldn't have wouldn't know where to go like it wouldn't know how to fall to the side so it, this is like the approximation of the fractured object and after i have that this this after I have this all calculated I can then feed it back into the vellum solver and have the vellum torus approximate another round of collision and together in some scenarios like in some some scenes this might be okay in other more complex scenes I'm, pr I'm pretty sure this would require a lot more tweaking before you can get a more decent uh, a decent look Thank you for watching and sticking to the end.